Google search is starting to suck a lot these days. When I do a search, for example, for the best AI automation marketing tools, the first one, two, three, four links are sponsored links, meaning it's a little bit of unbiased information. And then if I go down, all the other publications are all from really large publications. There's no small publications. We need to look at Reddit and Quora. Making it a bit of a clunky search experience, you might have the same experience that I'm having here. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna show you some beautiful free and paid alternatives to Google search that you need to know exist. Some of them you might have heard of, some of them you definitely have not heard of, and they are very, very good. Let's get started right away. The one that you probably heard of is obviously Perplexity. And if you haven't, you need to be using this tool. It's one of the AI powered search engines that I think first got things right and it got me away from using Google on a regular basis. Perplexity understands the context of your search, bundles everything together, and then serves it to you in a answer as opposed to a blue link, or in Google's case, a blue sponsored link, which is annoying. You can also do other types of research, for example, pro researches, which makes the source, gives you more sources and makes it a more detailed answer. Now they've added more free and great stuff, which is reasoning with research, making the research yet more detailed and reason about it. Let's give it a go here, for example, for just the normal auto version. And let's say, uh, give me the best AI models to write copy. Let's say, what are the best AI models to write SEO copy? And you get a detailed answer here explaining what the key features are and why they're good for AI for writing content. It also gives you the sources there. Even better though, Perplexity allows you to use their API, their application programming interface. And you don't really need to know what that means, but essentially you can borrow their technology and use it in other applications. Let me show you a quick example. In our community, we've created local SEO page generator on mass. So for example, we have here the location page name. We then give it to perplexity with a really big prompt asking it to do up to date and high quality research on that location. We then provide that research and that research only to other GPTs to create sections of that page, which will eventually upload into a website. This allows us to build really relevant, up-to-date information at once. Borrowing Perplexity's API into tools like this makes things incredibly useful, and it gives you this kind of superpower to build incredible landing pages should you need it. They also have this feature called Spaces, and you can think of Spaces a little bit like Google Notebook LM, where you can throw a bunch of files into a space or a notebook with Google, and you can ask questions about those files. But then Perplexity Spaces takes it a step further where if you're asking a question and it can't be answered with the files that you have in the space, it then goes and does a search online to find the relevant questions. Incredibly useful tool for somebody that has to do high quality specific research on a topic. If you're a university student, really, really good. Although you do have to be paying $20 a month to actually be able to use this really well. Next is one that you probably haven't heard of, although you should, and that's called Exa AI. To use it, at least as of the time of this recording, you do need to be on the wait list, and hey, guess who's on the wait list? So let's give it a go. Exa AI acts like a research assistant that aggregates data from different diverse sources. So not just kind of Google, LinkedIn, and PA and re peer review articles, and a bunch of other things. Let me give you an example. I recently asked it to find me people. So you can filter by searches with companies, people, articles, research papers, and a lot more that you define. I used people and I said, hey, find me AI automation experts in California. I hit enter. I've already done a search because it takes a little while. And it gave me this result where it gave me the title and the URL of his, their LinkedIn page. Now, of course, you can do this search in LinkedIn, but LinkedIn search kind of sucks. At least I think so anyway. And importantly, you can also download this data as a CSV file. Really handy. And again, it's not just with people, but I've done the search with companies. So I asked it to find me small financial advisor companies that are ranking low on Google. I could then theoretically reach out to them and say, hey, your SEO sucks. I'm good at ranking people. Let me help you. But it already does the research for me. There's a bunch of more things you can do here, but it structures the results in a very user-friendly user format that you can place in other different locations. Really, really cool tool, exit.ai. The next one is Kagi or Kagai.com. Kagai.com. 
If Google had a pro version or a subscription model to search results, it would be the paid version of Kagi. Let's do a search and then I can explain how this thing works and why it's so good. Let's ask it what are the best places to learn AI powered SEO. And you can see here that I can change the way where I'm searching for. So the region in which I'm searching, see you later VPNs. I don't need to waste money on those. I can order the search by website, ad tracking count and a bunch more things, including date range and a lot more options. So I can make the search experience a lot more personalized to me. Not only that, I can obviously search by by images and I can even search by GIFs, which, huh, who would have known? They do have a premium version, which allows you for even more customization. But to be honest, the free version is really, really good. The next one is your friendly DuckDuckGo. They pride themselves of being the search engine that won't track you because Google, and I'm sure Perplexity actually do this, track your search data so then they can they can essentially sell that data to you in a form of ads where people pay for what you search for and that's how you come up on Google ads or people show you their products that you're searching for. What I find with DuckDuckGo is that it's really unbiased. Google search sometimes tends to be a little bit unbiased and even perplexity because the language model behind perplexity is very, very safe. Not so much R1, but it won't kind of show you things that it deems a little bit risque, right? And that's what makes the DuckDuckGo a little bit more unbiased. Let's ask a similar question. What is the best place to learn AI powered SEO? And again, much like Kagi, I can change where I'm actually searching from, but you see I've got no ads here, which oh, for me is a breath of fresh air. Not only that, you see other publications, not just the classic HubSpot and Zapier, but you see other publications that aren't necessarily massive ones, which is kind of nice. The next one is you.com. This isn't predominantly a search engine, but their search function is really, really good. The beautiful thing about you.com is that it actually allows you to use all of the flagship models in the one chat base. Really cool. So here I can use, for example, O3 Mini, and if I want to, I can use Claude or Grok in the same chat. You do need to be paying, and I think it's 10 or $20 a month, I'm not sure, but the way that it searches is really high quality. At least I think so. I'm gonna go to research, and I'm going to ask it to, again, find the find the best AI tools for creating SEO content. You can see it's a little bit like perplexity where it's doing the research and now it's doing the reasoning a little bit to get an answer together. And much like perplexity, it's going to provide us with an answer and no blue links and no sponsored links, making it a nice research tool as well. But if I want to see the sources, I can always click on the buttons here and it'll take me to the source of where it got that data. Really interestingly, I can then use this data to create content on that same conversation and even change the model to something like O1, if I'm paying for the pro version, to write a blog post about this research. Really, really cool tool. And with that comes DeepSeek. And yes, I know before you berate me in the comments, it's not technically a search engine, but the search functionality together with DeepThink R1, which is their reasoning model that is competing somewhat against OpenAI's O1 reasoning model is really, really good. Now, I've found that when you ask it to do some research, if you don't say otherwise, it might find a lot of resources that are Chinese websites. This isn't generally an issue, but if you don't speak Mandarin, then it might not be the best search tool for you. Although if you tell it to stick to Western sources predominantly, then it will do that. And it is actually a wonderful tool to use for content generation because I find that DeepThink R1 creates content really good. You just have to know how to prompt it. I'll leave a video up here describing the whole step-by-step -step approach on how to create content that is actually ranking with DeepThink R1 and research enabled. In the similar response, in the similar taste, we have Quen Chat. Quen is actually from Alibaba, another Chinese company, and they created a really smart model, Quen 2.5, and you can do a web search with it. And it's using a very smart model. It's not so much a reasoning model, but it's outperforming o, uh, GPT-04, Claude Sonnet 3.5, and many more. It very nicely puts the format, the uh, sources right away here. So you can see where it's getting its information in a much nicer and clear understanding. Next is obviously GPT search. 
funny thing now gpt search is available and even in the free version and in the version where you don't even need to sign up to use search and this is where you need to know how gpt search works because a lot more people are going to be using it and you want to make sure that you're ranking in gpt search let's give this a go and let's search for something very specific that hopefully i'm ranking for i might not be these days let's say how to use deep sync deep seek r1 to write seo content that ranks i've got search enabled and i've got gpt 4.0 going here i'm going to do a quick search it's searching the web and it then is quickly going to give me the information perfect and you see that it gives me a very detailed answer a little bit like perplexity but you see the sources where it's got the information from and hey look at that that's where we are ai ranking is cool Oof, we're ranking for ai powered search search ai powered engines really really cool sometimes this does give you the video instead which is depending on the search intent what I mean here is that sometimes a user is looking for a video answer even though they don't know it. And that's where things like GPT or any other powered search, AI powered search engines actually give you the video because that might result in a better answer for you. Lastly, one of my favorite tools and, and disclosure here, you do need to be paying $200 a month to use it, is Deep Search. This thing is game changing and i know a lot of us say that about ai but it really does change things quite a lot for example i asked it to research for me what i can do to reduce churn rate in online communities is then ask me a follow-up question getting more detailed about my actual question to understand to get me the right info that it needs it then goes ahead and does research for a minimum of a couple of minutes. Now, how long it spends researching is really dependent on how complex your question is. For this instance, it only took six minutes, found 12 resources, but it gave me an incredibly detailed and reasoned answer. This whole thing is nine pages and there's some absolute gold in there. While this tool might seem expensive to pay $200 a month for it, for me, it's an absolute game changer and I'm well happy paying the $200 a month because of the quality of the research. You see, it not only has access to the internet and it's using the new O3 reasoning model to do all the research, but it's an autonomous agent, meaning that you can see the steps that it takes and it doesn't just join the research digest it and then serves it to you in an answer. It goes a couple of steps deeper where it researches a lot of things, understands the research, finds things where it should research deeper into and then goes into that flow. So it acts like an actual research assistant. It's not, here's the data, it's here's the data. Hmm, interesting, I need to search more about that. And it goes down a few rabbit holes all in order to provide you with the best, most detailed answer. You do get, and I can see here, the whole thing that it took to kind of write my research component. It actually takes a lot of steps, but the research has always been in Credible. Is it worth paying $200 a month? It depends. How often do you search and need to search really complex subjects? And that's it. If I've missed any search engines that you really like, let me know in the comments below. I'm obviously going to leave all the sources in the video descriptions below. I hope you liked this video. And all I ask that if you found any value here at all, consider subscribing and like this video. It'll help other people find Google alternatives and it might help their work. Cheers. I'll catch you in the next one.